welcome to this episode of HC Talk. I am your host, Lance Gormley. And I'm your co-host, Sissy C. HC Talk is an HCD podcast. Tell us what's happening, Harvey County. Well, hello, everybody, and hello, Sissy. How was your week this week, Sissy? Pretty good, pretty good. I can't complain. Yeah? Did you, Did I mean, we had a little cold snap there, and uh, I know you had a bit of a break last week because uh, Ran Solo... On the last episode yeah, with a uh, very interesting organization, civic organization here in the community. And I said then, and I'll say it again, that I plan on reaching out and, and touching base with all of the civic leaders of organizations mm-hmm. within the community, hopefully on a yearly basis, you know, right. so that way they can be involved, uh, we can be involved in their process and let people know in the community in a different way. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to nicer weather. Me too. And, you know, uh, about your interview that you did for our episode seven last week, I was very intrigued and I was grateful for some of the the content that you covered with uh, Mr. Gibbons, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I about said the wrong name. No, no. Um, Because there was a lot about masonry that I did not know that I was just assuming that I knew to be correct. And then so there was there was good info and I was grateful for that. Yeah, I'd say one of the um, most... um, misunderstood organizations Mm. um i don't know at this point in time i would say i I hate to say that but if people knew their history then they wouldn't be so uh leery of conspiracy uh, theorist wonder twins activate you know yeah right right. uh, Uh, secret societies kind of put people off thanks to uh the the crazy uh uh groups that took over after COVID hit and everybody was sitting at home on their devices all the time well, okay. we'll believe any any hodgepodge of stuff that's put out on the internet today, won't we now? Right, right. You don't yeah. have to be credible, just has to be there. That's right. Well, uh, let's get down to some local public notices, Sissy. Who right. are the local public notices for this week? All right, so we have the Newton City Commission meeting Tuesday at 7 p.m. City Hall is located at 201 East 6th Street in Newton. And the... Uh, if we go right into school boards. Oh, Harvey County Commission meets Tuesday at 9 a.m. at the courthouse. That is located at 800 North Main Street here in Newton. And the... Um, Last but not least, something that is is got quite a bit of traction here lately, the, the school board. The school board, <laughs> yeah. Which will meet Monday at 7 p.m. They do meet at McKinley Administrative Center located at 308 East 1st Street in Newton. That's right. So I think they're going to be talking about some interesting things this week. I, I did hear some some scuttlebutt. Yeah. So so I'm not sure. I have yeah. no clarification. Usually when something comes out on social media, you wonder. And it could be accurate, but it also could be um, in the right direction. In the right direction, but not necessarily totally right. I don't know. So I'm waiting mm. for, for that to come out. But uh, what uh, what did you see going on in uh, Harvey County? Well, this week? I actually um, am very grateful because I cannot always make the meetings in person that the school board meeting last time was on the Facebook and I got to sit and listen to watch that and take that in. And I was grateful to see some folks on the board uh, talk about uh, revisiting and um, discussing some feedback that they received um, since the, uh, oh, the downsizing of the discussion or the decision yeah. was made and not to mm-hmm. close any school, but yet to just right. downsize from two schools. Right, from that meeting, right. I, there was some, some parents that came uh, the following week uh, and, and even some, some community members that weren't parents, I think, had had, had kids, but maybe were older then. Um, but there was a lot of good feedback that people looked into uh, the numbers, looked into uh, different family dynamic situations and brought some really good information. So I was grateful for that the board is at least going to reconsider um, and take uh, take the feedback into consideration, maybe not reconsider any decisions or a revote yeah. or anything like that, but that the process is still ongoing. Yes, so. yes, that they haven't made a final, <laughs> final decision, I suppose. Right. Um, well, because that's a fluid situation. Yeah, not, and it right? will always be. Right. I mean, it will always be. To say that somehow or another somebody's doing something wrong if they change their mind on something with newer information or more time right. or whatever is, is just, it's not truthful and it's and it's and on the onset as mm-hmm. far as that goes i i i think that's what i want from my elected officials mm, i mean right. the, the city right now we're right. still kind of waiting on what's going on with the water i think mm-hmm. that they're getting real close to making a final decision on that um but it's taken a lot of time uh they've had a long discussion about it and um 
maybe some things in the past that commissioners had said they wanted to do, Mm -hmm. you know, um, now it changes, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and as long as that's done in an open and transparent way and people say, you know, this is why my decision is changing or this might, why we Mm -hmm. do something different now than what we were before. I'm fine with that. Right. I want that. (laughs) I don't, I don't want somebody that's just going to say, I am going to stand on this hill of no matter under any circumstances, do we need to close Walton? Right. I mean, not to take it back to that right. again, but right. but uh, that is a completely biased opinion. If you can't see it from the perspective that there's all other elementary schools going on here right now, it it makes me question. Like, I want to look for what's what's really going on here. I mean, we've got this. I'm I'm unbiased in every way. Yes, I have a child that's going to come up through elementary school, but right now I have no children in any of the elementary schools. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just want to know what's best and fiscally responsible, and that's the direction I personally think that we should go. So, well, there's a couple different dynamics working there, right? <clears throat> when you're elected official, you 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 vote them in, right? So you, you have some expectations on on whatever they may or may not do while they're on their term, right, or in their term, right? Yeah. They're serving, and, and so there's that, and everybody has a different set of expectations, anyway right observers i'm talking about Mm -hmm. um and then if you have skin in the game you have kids in the schools you have uh you've donated to the schools you help booster in the clubs and things like that to help the school you know or maybe you're a board member yourself yeah right so you have a different perspective that those expectations have to butt up against right and I think it's really important that we remember that all of our elected officials are literally just like us. Yeah, they're human beings. Right. Yeah. And we they have lives that revolve and that the duty that they're performing is literally just a portion of that life. And um, But they do get to do some extra cool things. They do, yeah. Like, think about this, for an instance. I was reading the Newton Kansan on uh, Thursday, uh, March 25th that the commission got to meet the new drug dog Mm. yeah yeah so i don't think that i would get the ability to meet the new drug dog maybe if i showed up there but unless other you know situations that you don't want to meet a drug dog and you know so that's not going to happen to me i don't think this is a really cool opportunity for them to meet the the new dog in a yeah. very positive setting. Yeah, always (laughs) no it's cool like i said i'm sure if you attended the meeting Mm. maybe then you'd um be able to to participate that i think right. that's i think that's pretty cool yeah. um definitely uh I, I think it's good that we're moving in that direction mm-hmm. i i personally think that uh canines are a very um good companion mm. and um partner mm. when it comes to law enforcement and uh i know it's probably not something that's completely possible but but i almost want for there to be more canines present Mm. with our officers Mm -hmm. you know especially when that sometimes you know it's just that push of that button that might be the difference between saving an officer's life that's on the side of a highway somewhere that's right and uh there should be more of that than not Mm -hmm. you know uh, my thought but i think that's pretty cool and then i i I have a question Mm. uh Surely you heard about, you know, speaking of law enforcement now, the mm-hmm. hubbub about the two arrested uh, on after, Old Main after the standoff. standoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, you know, people are going to think that all I do is surf the Facebook. Well, I actually do things other than that. Oh, OK. But I do see a lot of the local news on there. So <clears throat> I actually saw two things. I'll talk about the standoff real quick. OK. And then I have something else concerning the. Social the, media. The dogs. Oh, dogs. Yeah, I, okay. have, I have a tidbit. Okay. All right. Okay. So just, just a tidbit. It's my passion. Right? <laughs> okay. No, no anyway. Uh, so I um, read an article. I cannot remember which um, newspaper it was from, but I read an article about that situation <clears throat> where uh, the, um, I believe it was Deputy Chief Powell okay. that was interviewed or or quoted in that article and said that the residential safety public safety was paramount and you know that's always part of it right Mm -hmm. um but for that those houses are very close together there was people home there was people sitting in their cars videoing that made it to to the facebook that i noticed that were observing that situation and that situation could have uh, popped off in a really bad way uh and and so i was just really grateful that the 
that the the care was there, and obviously we know it's there all the time, but <clears throat> to really go the extra mile and for uh, Deputy Chief Powell to go ahead and say it was paramount for us, yeah, and and it went exactly like we were hoping, yeah, and we expected it to go, and um, so you know I think that's really important that people remember that they have they have to ride the lightning right in a situation like that because they just do not know yeah they can prepare as much as possible but you just never know how it's going to actually go so uh, grateful all around yeah and i think they've come a long way i just law enforcement in general big right uh has come a long way with these um the way they are policing now you know uh like for this instance right here uh it said what i read that this person <coughs> left the home mm-hmm. uh maybe realized they were being tailed Mm, you know mm -hmm. and so then circled back and got in the house before maybe they could pull them over i'm Mm kind of thinking this is the way it's going right and i find that interesting because i think that uh you know they're looking at a way to be able to um not get this person but take this person into custody with the least amount of um unintended consequences mm-hmm. that can right. come of it. And from what I understand, I think there was even some talk of a gun maybe too on oh. that. So mm. uh, when you when you put all that into perspective right. to know that, you know, um, you can hear it from the horse's mouth, mm-hmm. the, your you know, top brass of your law enforcement agency is telling you that even though this was a little bit of a hiccup, that we made sure we had a lot of this under control and we mm-hmm. actively right. work to make sure that if, you know, even in situations like this, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're trying to maintain well, and I think safety. I think it's really important to, un- to understand the context of the situation, too. I, I, I do not recall if the article said this much as far as a background, but I do know that uh, they did mention that the, um, the, the, the male suspect had had a warrant. So they were there to try to serve the warrant yeah. uh, on him. And then I believe there was a female also involved Yep. Um, that was just accompanying this person yep. and that there was, uh, that she was arrested for, uh, I believe obstructing the process. Yeah. Interesting um, that you almost got that verbatim. Oh, I'm oh, looking wow. at uh, the cans in here in the March 23rd oh, and I'm goodness. looking at a six here and it's going basically just how you said it was. Yeah. It well, says that, go. uh, the person had felony warrants for probation violations and drug crimes. Uh, that he had been known to have guns. Mm. Uh, That was Deputy Chief Scott Powell. And then that they had been looking for him. Mm -hmm. So I I think, um, I mean, it's a pretty small town. Mm. uh, And maybe it goes without saying that, yeah, of course they were looking for him, but maybe they were looking for a way to take him into custody at a point in time Mm. in which was going to create the least amount of problems. And I say, I mean, I'm, uh, it's one of those things. I don't know. I, 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 this would be a great time to bring up an interesting situation that happened to me one time. Mm, Okay. Okay. I'm going over to my dad's house, all right, Mm -hmm. uh, to look at a new firearm that he had purchased. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I go over. I'm standing on the front porch. We're having a conversation about the firearm, um, handing it back and forth to one another, and then we go inside. Uh, A couple minutes later, I get a call on my phone from an unknown number, and I'm thinking, well, that's weird, you know, or whatever, and come to find out, you know, uh, I answer it, and it's the police. Oh. And they're wondering uh, if I'm okay, and I'm, yeah, I'm okay. What, What? you know, what's up with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, And I look outside only to see, like, a little bit of a police car. Oh. And I thought, oh, no. You know, I'm no dummy, right? I'm I'm sure that somehow or another something has just gotten misconstrued. And this is not a situation I want to be in. And I don't want my dad to be in this situation. Uh This is a bad situation, right? right? right. So I kind of explained to my dad, hey, you know, uh, when we were out here looking at guns, I think somebody might have thought something happened that didn't. So we need to get, we need to like uh, do whatever they're telling us to do, Uh right? Right. And I walk out the door um, to an overwhelming police presence. Wow. I mean, overwhelming police presence like squat and stuff yeah oh wow yeah and it was a very real moment wow if that's never happened to anybody it was a very very real moment Mm -hmm. uh nobody wants one gun pointed at them any time in their life let alone like 25 or 30 at one time uh so anyway um yeah, that was a very interesting situation. Uh, it did come out, obviously, that we were just looking at the guns and mm. then, um, you know, we're looking at a gun. And anyway, long story short, big misunderstanding. It's all water under the bridge. I don't right. know how many years ago now. 
but still, I just remember thinking to myself, man, I would hate to come here and commit a crime. Right. Or if I happened to be somebody that was really in need, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. they did that right. smart style. I don't know right. how else to say that, but they did that in a matter of minutes right. with us just standing in the living room, having a conversation, not knowing any of it was taking place around us. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to say in that situation, I was on the receiving end of something that just was a misunderstanding. That's a big kudos to our law enforcement and Al and what they're talking right, about, what right. they do. You right. know, they wanted to make sure that they can be safe and, and that they can accomplish this without problems. Right. You right. know, <clears throat> so and, that's a tough job. Tough, tough, tough. What goes back to why I think they should have more dogs. Right. You know. Right. OK, so the other tidbit I had on that on the dogs was I also saw some uh, post um, about uh, one or maybe two of our. Do we have two dogs? Newton City. Do we have two? Or I think we one? have a couple more than, yeah, I think we have two. It's, it kind of gets muddy in there. I don't know. The New, North mm -hmm. Newton does. Heston right. does, I think. Right. I think the Sheriff's Department does. So Right. Well, there was. We got dogs. <laughs> anyway, I saw um, a uh, post maybe from the, maybe from the um, Sheriff's Department or the Police Department about uh, someone had done a fundraising or someone had, some oh. group had done a fundraising to... Um, Get a, a jacket, a, a vest, a, yeah, a dog vest. A dog, yes. um, oh shoot. A I bulletproof vest for a dog, you. basically. I could not, the words were not coming yeah, to me. Yeah, okay. and that's cool. And I don't so. know where I saw that. I don't probably couldn't find it out of, you know, yeah. right but now. But that's cool, right? But yeah, that's something that's awesome. I thought it was really neat that there's, mm -hmm. you know, a mechanism or people wanting to do that or even contributing in that, in that way. Because speaking of that, um, it appears that some of the things that are going on in Topeka right now with mm -hmm. our tax legislation and the food sales tax and all of this mm -hmm. uh, coupled together um, could potentially drastically affect some city budgets here. Mm. Uh, and, you know, when you talk about like Newton, one of the biggest expenditures for the city of Newton is their law enforcement mm -hmm. coupled with their fire and EMS, right? right? right. So when you're thinking about um, the need for what we were just talking about, I mean, we're seeing it real time, right? Uh, experiencing it that now... Um, if something goes a certain way at the state level, Newton, you know, and, and all the communities around it, you know, and count, you know, they're all going to suffer right. some tax revenue because of this. Right. And what kind of taxation is, is it specifically that they're I believe working it on in the legislature? I, I think it goes uh, with, uh, it says here. Is it sales tax or um, property taxes or? Yes, it says uh, it's a, has to do with the food sales tax, including locally leveled sales taxes. Right. So right. Uh, our representative Owens here even has said that um, the sales tax bill was killed in the House on Thursday, but it is not fully dead because it was passed by the Senate. Ah. When the legislature approved a reduction to sales tax on groceries last year, mm -hmm. the bill did not affect locally leveled sales tax. Okay. So uh, you can find that once again in the, the Kansan. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be Tuesday, March 21st. So awesome. I know this is going to be a continuing mm -hmm. thing. I'd like to get um, Representative Owens in here on Legislative Update and ask him about that again. Absolutely. Uh, well, I have another Harvey County um, tidbit. Okay. Two of them, actually. More tidbits. tidbits. There's a lot of tidbits today. Tidbits. Must be an episode eight thing. Anyway, <laughs> no, it's because I had a week off, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been you're, raring to go. You're thinking about it for uh, a while. Okay, so New Hope Shelter broke ground. Yep. And so that's very exciting that Absolutely. their process has started and not just in the visionary stage. And the other thing was that the, um, just a reminder that the Harvey County 2023 Home and Garden Show is going on in Heston this weekend. And um, I believe uh, some of the um, garden centers around here are running some open houses and things while that's going on. So if you're out and about, go check that out. The weather's supposed to be nice as far as I know. Okay, very so. good. Well, and once again, if you have anything that's going on in Harvey County that you want to talk about or have us talk about or mention or anything, feel free to send us a message. We actually get quite a few messages quite often. 
Uh, I'm pretty good about checking that, and I know we have some other people online that check that as well just to make sure that we're getting back to you in a timely manner. So, um, yeah, I've got a couple people that have really been asking me to talk about some issues here over the next couple of weeks, and I think we will depending upon how well, I will mm-hmm. want to interject this, right, uh, right, and get your opinion on it because I, I think it's rather interesting stuff. So keep keep yourself posted for that. I would say uh, the last uh, we it was very nice to know that our Harvey County Citizen of the Week a couple weeks back, Wyatt Hendrickson, was able to place third at the overall national NCAA yeah. tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. You know, and when you said that you would not shake a stick at him, and I said, oh, he's a strapping young lad. I was right. I had no idea how strapping of a yeah. young lad he was. Yeah, what are you trying <laughs> so. to get me put in the hospital? You're like, oh, so, you shake a stick out? I don't yeah. want him to think in so any way, shape, awesome. or form I'm shaking any stick right, at this right. person. If you would like to do that, I'll watch. Right. It'll and be a I, good YouTube video. And I saw that uh, that he uh, posed a photo or two with, with a famous person. Who, a president. A, a, For all the haters president. out there, yeah. I don't know who would turn down a nice photo op with any president, right, let right. alone, <clears throat> the, you know, the one we don't have, you know, we don't want to like. Shall right remain now. nameless. Right, yeah. Right. So, so no, that's, uh, that's awesome, so, man. I mean, that's awesome. a once in a lifetime experience that's right. because of what he's accomplished. And then he can say, hey, I'm from Newton, Harvey County, Kansas. That's, that's where I'm right. from. That's right. That's right. And you I'm know? a champion wrestler. And we, we raise champions here. That's I already right. said it before. I want to say it again. This is where champions are born, raised, grown. And we send them out into the world to do amazing and wonderful things. So, Sissy. Yes. Who is our citizen of the week? But uh, first, before you tell me, okay. we have a sponsor for oh, the citizen of the week this all week. All right, lay it on me. Our sponsor for the citizen of the week this week is Hall's Tree Service. Hall's Tree Service is locally owned and operated. Uh, they've been ser- uh, exceeding and surpassing customer demands in Newton and the surrounding area for 40 years, over 40 years now. Larry and his crew are guaranteed to work hard for you. Remember this, there's no tree too tall, no job too small. Call Halls at 316-772-1919. Remember, there is no tree too tall, no job too small. Call Halls at 316-772-1919. Now, who is our Citizen of the Week, Sissy? Right, so I couldn't uh, nail down one person to champion this week i'm going to champion the angels among us campaign oh yes that the that's Kansan come out featured. i did see that and we actually have the uh the angels that were nominated and uh, posted in the paper and i'm not sure what date the paper is that should be saturday uh saturday march 25th that is saturday okay. paper so i'm just going to read the names okay and then um Everybody can give them a shout out. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we had uh, Mike Lloyd, Jason Leal, Caitlin Abbott, Shanna McGinnis, Dan Heinze, Barbara Bunting, Carolyn Adams, Jean Mitchell, John Flores, Terenda Casimer, Wenda Black, Chris Rangel, Tammy Lakey, and Gina Corrigan. Congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You know, <clears throat> I know so I saw that and I was looking forward. Uh, I read the paper like the Kansan uh, and was uh, really looking at some of these articles that are going to come out because I know uh, just doing what I do that there are a lot of people that make things happen and they're often unsung heroes, you know, yeah. and these people in the community, when you say some of their names, it's like, man, I know the work and the effort that they put into just our community, mm-hmm. kids in our community, life of service. Um, heck, I was in Topeka uh, this last week again uh, for some things, and I ran into uh, Miss Bunting, you know. Really? And, uh, yeah, and I had a good conversation with her. It was a very uh, wonderful woman. Uh, I just I have mad respect for who she is as an individual, the service that she has um I mean, to the community over the mm-hmm. course of her life, uh, her family. I mean, you, you're, you're talking about a very, very awesome family-owned business that's just grown in this community. It's just, uh, it's wonderful. And uh, I, would, I, I just wanted to say that, that uh, it's always nice to see Miss Bunting because she's cordial to, to about everybody all the mm-hmm. time, no matter what. Right, right. Well, and obviously these uh, were nominations from the general public. 
So these people have really made some positive impacts on those that nominated them. And so if, if we know these people, you, if you know them, go out and, you know, give them a high five, thank them for their service. Cause obviously they're making mad impacts. Yeah. So when they are, Chris Rangel's another one, yeah. you know I mean? We can just see. And then that was the thing is <clears throat> I almost, I almost didn't want to have a citizen of the week this week. And we kind of had a little bit of that conversation. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, um, Man, how do you how do you pick mm-hmm, one right. of those people? Right. Well, you can't. You have to you get them all. You right. know. So, right. hey, and thank you, Hall Street Service, for sponsoring. Yes, we appreciate you. So, all right, sissy, we're moving on to more stuff that we know is going on locally. I don't know. I could almost rest on this um, situation about, let's say, let, let's let's go state ramifications on local government. Mm. You know, it's like we're already kind of, I mean, you know, and it's Newton, right? It's not anybody's fault where Newton might happen to be right now. But but if we all of a sudden start getting more taxes slashed that what we were dependent upon before, right? Um, that's just going to leave us even more of a quagmire we got to dig through, which, you know, educated people, that's their job. But it's it's like I tell people I'm so close to do finishing my master's and everything in my MPA program was surrounded by Newton, everything mm. Newton. It was... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, if I got any option to the research any entity or, or anything, it was always Newton, Newton's water bill, Newton's this, Newton's that. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter what it was, right? So so I'm starting to understand mm-hmm. the real difficult situation that right. maybe we are in, right, right? right? And it's like, okay, well, it's going to take a lot of heads to try to figure this out. And I'm a pretty smart guy, according to, you know, my teachers and stuff. So I don't know if they're just trying to keep me around or anything. But. Are, are you great in your own mind like me? Oh, always. Okay. Always. I look at myself in the mirror every day and I just, you know, dote on myself. <laughs> can't really help it. I mean, look at me. <laughs> Come on. Right. Then I got like some, like, right. like some education to back that yeah. up. Look out people. Right. There you so, go. uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, it's, it's finding it somewhat interesting that, that there are so many different things that affect one entity, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it goes back to what Rod Christ said, you know, about the fish hook. Uh, mm-hmm. right. it's true. It's a true statement. It's right. very simple. People can understand that. But when you really get into this, knowing it, knowing it, it's very hard. So one thing that I'm starting to evolve into is really realize, hopefully trying to um, inform people more and educate people more, maybe even with this program, you know, is, is an avenue to do that, that, that there are so many things that work right now. And there are, uh, you know, the Newton city of Newton gets put in situations where they're completely outside of their control and we're all in this together and nobody's the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And this is a necessary evil of government and bureaucracy. We're lucky to have a government where we can elect these people and hold them accountable through elections and stuff. And uh, But there's something that you mentioned that you wanted to talk about. So I don't know if we really could go from talking about, you know, some of the decisions made at the state of Kansas level that mm-hmm. are affecting the, the city. So I don't want to get these two tied mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. But you, you kind of, you brought up something that I thought was a little bit strange that I just kind of brushed over as I was looking at the, the paper this week. And, okay. and, and feel free, because I, I think you got me thinking. You know, it seems simple, but it got me thinking. So what do you got? Well, I saw an article about smoke-free parks could be coming this year. Smoke-free parks. Okay. Uh-oh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the position of, uh, I'm, I'm going to argue about this, oh, right? No. I'm going to present some, some things that I feel like um, are not up for litigation or um, policy changes. And that's, you know, we have the ability in this country with individual sovereignty to move about inside the scope of the law, obviously, to live and move and have our being and pursue life, liberty, and happiness how we see fit. And when we're out outside in the fresh air, we should have the freedom to light up a smoke. Mm. Now, I am a parent, but I teach my child that, you know, not everybody's going to do things like we do it, right? So you might witness some things or you might hear some things or might see some behavior that, you know, you don't agree with or, you know, I don't agree with like smoking, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if it's smoking, you know, just why is that a big deal? Uh, Right. I I mean, I understand, Uh, you know, if if, if there's a, if there's, okay. So 
So put myself in a position of somebody who um, utilizes the parks and takes their, their small children, their children, right? Okay. So, of course, if I'm pushing my daughter on the swing, I wouldn't want somebody to be smoking a cigarette, right? You know, five feet from us, right? Yeah. Or a foot from us or whatever, right? So, I mean, there's some, there's some things, right? Yeah. I, I can see the point about wanting um, smoke-free parks, right? For the benefit of air pollution, right? But at the same time, at the same time. While we have cars driving around there. Right. right. At the same time, though, I, I'm not sure making it illegal for a person to, oh. who is of legal age to smoke a cigarette in an outdoor space is really the, um, the laws we should be making. Because if it's, if it's this one, we, we make smoking in outdoor spaces or in parks illegal in newton let's just go with the city then what's the next thing you can't drive gas-powered cars well, in the city mm, then the next thing is is you can't but buy an american flag slope. in your front nobody, yard right? you can't bring that so into the argument right now because nobody's trying it's to an say inch don't. by inch okay overall taking of our individual mm. liberties and i think that designated smoking areas and parks Maybe at your car, you know, in the parking lot, but don't make it to where you can't be at the park and smoke a cigarette. I, I just think that we're we're going to, uh, down a bridge too far. Oh well, yeah, that's a slippery that. slope. I mean, so but, but I see, the problem is, is, is that in today's day and age, there are so many laws that have to be made because people are just stupid. And I'm going to say it. They're just dumb. If you didn't have a speed limit that said you can only go 75 miles on the interstate, people would do 110 miles an hour on the interstate. The mass, mass majority, I mean, I'm, I'm, let's say this, no, no, I'm going to say the mass majority would probably not be crazy, but then you'd always have those ones, right? So, so you have to make laws for the ones. It's not because you or I would like, you know, rationalize and say, hey, I'm standing down wind from somebody or somebody would say I'm, I'm five foot from somebody else's kid smoking a cigarette or whatever the case may be, because there's people that will actually do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people that just don't have no respect for anybody. They're not mm -hmm. going to care about whether your kid's there. You know, it's like I'm going to smoke here and if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Right. You know, and so I'm a fan, I guess you could say, of having designated smoking areas. I think it's um, a halfway point, right? And we see it everywhere we go anyway already. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that it was, you know, you can't smoke within so many feet of a doorway. Right. Well, people, oh, yeah, they're Nazis. They're Nazis. Right, right. Well, not really because, you know, I mean, do you really want somebody? I mean, if you're a smoker, why do you have to stand 20 feet in front of a door to smoke? I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. right? So if that's the case and I have enough respect for people to just stay away from them, I guess now I have to be classed in with a group of people where there is a couple people that just are not going to do that. they're going to go blow cigarettes all over your kids or they're going to do whatever they can at the park and they're not going to have no respect for nobody so that's those examples mm -hmm. that that people get on board with and try to um, ban smoking at a park but as far as like banning smoking at a park i think is a bit much because and then we'll go down this one right i i it, this is why i was really having this debate myself and why I thought it'd be cool to talk about it is because really there's that other side of like, well, are we going to ban eating in a park? Right. Because I don't want my child to see somebody that's indulging in gluttony. Look at what that's happens right. with heart that's disease. Right. I mean, we know that, yeah. that, um, you know, overeating um, and just being, you know, right. Obese, you know, mm -hmm. is, is a cause of heart disease. Right. And see, that's crazy to me because I don't even view people in that light, mm -hmm. but because right. I've, you know, went through academia right. and realized that there's a lot of discussion of this stuff because mm -hmm. people have time on their hands to discuss it, I guess, rather than just be in the real world and not well, care whether cause. somebody's eating a double right. bacon cheeseburger right. or not, uh, right. or smoking a cigarette 10 right. feet from you or whatever. Right. I don't get tripped on that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I mean, where do you, where do you go from there? Right. So, you know? so the article talks about, uh, vaping devices being included in that. So, that leads me to use my critical thinking skills to think that maybe the argument isn't air pollution for health-related reasons because there's a big difference health risk-wise between burning tobacco smoke mm -hmm. and vapor 
from a vaping device. So it's not right? about the secondhand so smoke think, argument. I think is what, you're saying. what what I deduced from the article um, is that is uh, uh, wanting to protect children from the witnessing um, this behavior. That it would be like a gateway to because you saw it. Sh- yeah, if they see it. Oh my god! But the idea in if their that's head, true, like that, if that's right. true. Then our children are damned to hell because right. they've seen right. Disney movies over the last five years, right. and they start interjecting different types of things mm-hmm. into that right. and other people's lifestyles that right. are not like mine. Right. And I mean, that just left me just speechless. I don't know what to do about that. Right. So you know, all these children seeing all that, we might just—I mean, that's mind blowing, right. me, sissy. Right. What are we going to do? Well, exactly. What are and we going to do with these and kids? And that's why know? I uh, am against this because I feel like the. Um, Getting a law passed or a policy change to prevent people from exercising their freedom to smoke outside, right, in the fresh air. Be respectful and don't get near the kids. I mean, come on, right? Well, you say come on, but that's not the way that it is. but, But if we are sheltering our children from possibly seeing someone use a tobacco product at the park... We, that is the wrong, there's kudos to that, there's credibility to that, I get it, I'm a parent, right? But we, can, we cannot regulate our society to protect our kids from everything. We just can't, we have to raise them. This is how we live. This is what the law says, and we abide by that, right? So if they put a law in place, in the county that says smoke free parks. I have no choice but to not smoke at the park. That's not true. I can smoke in the parking lot. <laughs> That's or not true. Wait till I leave, right? Yeah. So because and how do you ban it in a public person. park because somebody that's sitting in a car can smoke in their car? Right. Like if you're on a school property and you're sitting in your but vehicle. It's the, that's that's your the property. idea that we can get lawmakers to make policy or to change policy. To fit our comfort level of our kids might see someone smoking a cigarette. I mean, I'm going, I'm going to, um, dial down a little bit because I feel like I could really go too far on that way windy on this. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. You don't want to say anything you're going to regret. I know, I know a perfect segue when we come back in our next part. Please say a prayer for the people in in Mississippi that got hit by the tornado last night. So, yeah, if you don't know about that, seriously, I'm being serious. Well, and I can it was bring bad. That, I can bring that back it local too. Is like, thank God, not us, because right. we live in right. an and area where to, there are tornadoes, to that, right. and it wasn't very long ago. Right. What was it? The anniversary of the Heston tornado. Right. You know, and that right. was... Uh, it was a big one. It was a big one, mm-hmm. you know, and tornadoes are getting worse because right. now we're even creating, you know, it's not just oh. a, it's an EF scale, right? Right, yeah. right. And, and we have the uh, coronal hole. Oh, that's... In the sun. Yeah, that'd that's be interesting. Causing, that's causing some things. We'll put up some more so, solar panels. I'd say this. Solar panels. Yes, here in Kansas. Mm. Uh, okay, we're going to have to save some of this for the next part okay. of our program. Uh, But, uh, yeah, keeping it and sticking it local, um, thinking about mentality. Um, I, after so many years of, you know, navigating through the political and policy-making landscape, Mm. have come to understand that there are more people that do not want to agree to disagree in that they want government to mandate their own belief systems Mm. on everybody else. It's like, I don't understand it. It makes me so frustrating. And and, and this is just an example at a a local level. And I'm not against, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't think anybody should smoke. I think it's disgusting and it's nasty. And I think that I should quit or whoever should quit. I think it's wrong. It doesn't help us. It's not good for us. It's what is, what good is it? It does no good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to promote it. And I don't definitely don't want any kid to ever start doing it. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's, it's ridiculous to think that anybody really wants this, but we do live in a country that people can legally choose to do it if they want. And there needs to be a respect for that. 
you know, and, and, and at least at some level, a respect for somebody to choose what they want to do in their own life, even if I'm morally against it, because I mean, even then when you come to smoking, is there really a moral problem here? And this is making it sound like we got a moral problem here. It's like, you can't just look at somebody and go, they smoke. I choose not to smoke. They choose to have poor health decisions. Other people choose to have poor health decisions when they overeat or other people choose not Mm -hmm. to, and they don't exercise or whatever risky engaging behavior that you're in or health, you know, problems or whatever. I'm going to go on a rant here, but, but why is smoking Mm -hmm. the demon? You know, I mean, it's kind of like for all these other things. I mean, I'm so tired of hypocrites, you know, mm. the the biggest person in the room that's going to slam four cheeseburgers tonight and eat two shakes, which is an over exaggeration. Right. Mm-hmm, but they right. want to be critical of me. Mm-hmm. It's like, how about we're all just human beings and right. none of us are perfect and, right. and and back off a little bit. Right. Well, you know? and I and I think that I, I really do agree with the idea, especially from a parental standpoint that our, it, what our children see here and, and are around is we need to be mindful of that, right? We, we want to protect them, right, at all costs. And we, need, we, we try to push the boundary to um, be able to do that better than we did yesterday, right? So I'm, not, I'm, I'm absolutely not talking against that. And, and I'm, I definitely agree with what Stan is doing I definitely agree with what, um, is it Harvey County uh, drug for youth? youth. Yes. I'm an absolute hundred percent right. supporter Absolutely. of both. Right. Right. Absolutely. And I, I agree with, um, thinking of new ways outside the box to, you know, keep it clean, so to speak, yeah. you know, live a clean life. Right. And, and if the kids are coming up with these ideas, that's even better. Right. But it's so very important as a constitutional scholar and studier of academia when it comes to our government and the way our government was founded and works to this day, we cannot utilize policymaking to fit our comfort level. We cannot do it because we are always going to be overreaching and using the government to encroach to get our agenda passed through. Whatever makes us comfortable, that is not this country that is not reality mm. well that's why people and elect so we people. have to come i'm hoping that can, we can come to a balance in this debate and whatever is decided because something obviously will be decided on this that it can be a balanced decision that will accommodate everyone so. and see i'll go with this i'll say um one thing that i hope that happens in the end on that i got two things to say because i know we got to go to a break here in a second um one being that, um, you know, I, I think in the end, designated smoking areas are, are an acceptable sure. um, halfway point. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it is what right. it is. I don't know what are you going to do, call the police on somebody for smoking a cigarette five I foot outside sure of a designated area. I mean, that's what they want to do with their time, you know. But um, so anyway, the second one uh, comes down to uh, what are we teaching our children? Mm. You know, it's like. I try to do my best that when I see something that maybe is not necessarily privy to my worldview, okay, because we all have them, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, we all have worldviews, but uh, that I try not to teach my children to pass judgment on that person. Mm. When they ask me, well, what's the matter with that person, or why does that person do that, or or, this is icky, or whatever, this is the case, it's like, you know what, we all have freedom of choice. That's right. You know, at least you got the opportunity to smell the icky dicky, what's smoky or whatever it is, okay? And then you choose not to do that. That's right. Because it's unhealthy. And we can pray for them. Mm-hmm. Right. We can pray for them and hope right. that if they, you know, if we truly believe that whatever they're doing is, is bad for themselves or bad for their family or going to cut years off their life, that we can just pray for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, what happened to that? Right. No, we need to judge them. Right. That's the new right. Christianity. And, okay, right. so. Okay, so um, Eatery of the Week is the, our next segment. Okay, right? who's right. our Eatery of the Week? Our Eatery of the Week is Courtesy's Diner. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. It's at uh, 1039 Washington Road, Cedar Village, here in Newton. And the hours are Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Breakfast served all day. There's daily specials and my favorite favorite thing on the menu is the cc's ice cream pie mm, mm, yum dessert. yum i love going Go give in them there. some love uh, i love going in there and being able to get late pancakes i like going in there and get omelets and and anytime anytime i ask 
hey, can I get breakfast for yeah. supper? They make it happen. That's right. Go see Courtesies. That's Go see right. Courtesies this week. They are awesome. And I love the I love the atmosphere. I yeah. mean, I'm not a sports sports person, but right? Curtis has got some pretty cool collection in there. It's a nice atmosphere. It's mm-hmm. a great, great diner. That's right. Visit Curtis's Diner. Okay, we'll be back after this.